We need it now, not then. Boom! 600 to 630. Five times, guys. I mean, I don't know what to say. What's up, guys? It's Sam, the Raid Man. We have an insane clan boss video for today. This is going to be my new record. I'm confident in it. This is going to be pretty nuts. This is based off of a few different champions, and I've kind of found some pretty fun uh, synergies. The biggest thing is the new fusion that is very divisive. I understand that, but Vault Keeper Wixwell, I'm currently going for his soul. He's only level 48, so he's going to get better. But basically, he's intercept. He grows shields. He places shields. Now, the intercept's interesting. It can stop stuns in our clan bus team. We don't have block debuffs, so we're going to have to find a way to deal with the stuns. The intercept can work really well for that. After a while, he can place that on everybody. My situation is just a little bit interesting. So I saw Hell Hades' video where he went 2-1 to one using an increased speed champion, and I was like, you know who's a really fun increased speed champion that I haven't used yet, that I bought, or not bought, got, built, and haven't really utilized yet, I even have a one-star soul for him, is Grand Oak Padre, who has increased speed, turn meter fill, and full cleanse. So I'm like, well, I wonder if I can get this to work with the uh, stun cleansing, which I'm sure I can, but I just haven't done it. It won't work if you're using Merciless and Reflex, which I am. I just Reflex, really, or Refresh. Um, but he also has a ally attack. Now, you're going to see why in a minute, but there's a blessing and a curse, which comes from him placing this continuous heal. Um, second up, another champion that I've got that I haven't been able to use a ton, at least for videos, is Lady Makage. I have a two-star soul for her. She's going to be in Cycle of Magic, two refresh accessories, super fast, fastest on the team. She's got the buff extension and debuff extension and ally attack. She also has an A1, where if someone is from the Shadowkin faction, they join in the attack. You can see it next to her. I have a beautiful plus four Gentoro. I only have a two-star soul, much to my chagrin. I uh, put him in Heaven Cast because he's going to get up to 10 buffs. That is kind of the positive side of the coin for Padre because he's going to fill everyone's buffs up with continuous heals and all the other buffs. Um, but that just means that Mikage, who's going to be the stun target in this particular run, is not going to be able to receive the intercept buffed past the first two stuns. So she's going to get stunned. That's okay. Uh, I think we're built well enough to get through that. You need another debuff extender. So I thought, pretty simple. I'm just going to go with my Demitha because she has a six-star soul, wherever she is. She's not plus one right there. Six-star soul, she's in our shield set. So you have a shield set from her, a shield uh, ability from Wixwell, and then you're extending those two shields. She's built for damage uh, as much as I can in a shield set. 227 speed, 3700 attack, 100% uh, crit, 240 crit damage, and again with the six-star cruelty. I think that's everyone. I will show you the setup and then the stats for each of them. Yeah, so Gentoro, he's going to be our lead. If you really need help with the stats, you can put defense. Health doesn't really matter. It's all based on defense because it's going to be hitting the shield. Once the shield's died, you die. So Gentoro, if you're unfamiliar with his kit, three-turn cooldown, Oni's Rage, attacks one enemy, places a decreased defense and weaken for two turns. Every fourth time he uses this ability, he attacks five times. This is the hardest single target hitting ability in the game. You will see the bonkers, bonkers numbers it does. A2, attacks one enemy, steals 100% turn meter, great skill, but doesn't work on the clan boss. But what's cool is it's built into his kit, decreases the cooldown of Oni's Rage, that's the hard hitting A3, by one turn if the target is immune to turn meter reduction effects. So this is party one, this is party two, this reduces the party of this, which gets us back to doing it more often where it does millions of damage. A1 just hits hard. In PvE or like waves or PvP, it, it does grant an extra turn if you kill somebody, which is cool. Uh, Wixwell. Again, he's not fully built, but he's just all defense. 5,300 defense, 269 speed. I did build him with career and crit damage just because. Um, and then I put him actually in a weird blessing. I put him in uh, faultless defense, I think is what it is. He should be here. Yeah, which is just going to reflect some of the... Uh, because you have increased defense placed by himself, it's going to reflect a portion back to the attacker. It's like, well, that seems cool. Um, let's see who else. We showed you Mikage. Showed you Gentora. Oh, let me show you Gentora's stats because I showed you his kit. His stats are, as you can imagine, plus four. Pretty gross. Uh, total stats, 8,165 attack. 2,700 defense. This is probably the biggest weakness of the team. This and Mikage being stunned. Uh, he's the lowest defense on the team by far. We do have increased defense, um, but his shield will get eaten through faster than anyone else's. 222 speed, 100 crit rate, 347 crit damage, 264 accuracy. 
It's pretty bonkers. I showed you Demitha. She's in the shield set. Uh, Padraig, Mikage, Wixwa. I want them to reduce their cooldowns as much as possible. Now, one thing I did notice, I tested this a little bit. I cut it off early, is this is how Hell Hades has it set up, where you want him placing the increased defense shield and intercept buff on everyone as, as much as possible. This is priority one. But the issue is... Mikage, this works typically because you want to spread in the intercept and whenever someone like say Makage or your stun target is taking stuns, that's lowering the intercept count, you want to keep replacing it. That doesn't work on this team because when it gets down, inevitably, it's going to be replaced by a continuous heal from Padraig. And I'm like, I could turn that off, but I don't want to. I think it's going to work. I'm just going to turn off, not turn off. I'm just going to put this on the opener and then the shield growth as his priority, which is probably better for the shields not as great for the stunts. So this is not what I'm suggesting for you guys to do, but I do want to explain why I'm doing it. And this one is a turn meter boost, which doesn't help with the speed tune, but it's fine because everyone gets the same amount of turn meter, so it's fine. Actually, Jintoro gets slightly more, but that's okay. Um, and then he's got the ally attack, which is big. We're going to open with this, but this is really what we're here for. The reason I want to include him more than anything, increased speed, ally attack, obviously. The A1 is a 25 books, a 50% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally's active skill by two turns. For Wixwell, all that means, especially since we turn off the Codex ability, the intercept ability, he's only, the only skill for uh, Wixwell he can reduce is gonna be the shield growth, which would be awesome. For Mikage, it can either do her ally attack, which is great, or her buff and debuff extension, which is great. Mm -hmm. For Demitha, we've turned off the block damage. Doesn't really help us too, too much, I don't think, because it's just hard to time. Um, so really, it's all only going to reduce her buff extension. And then um, Tintoro, it's just either of his damages. If it does this one, that's great. That's a ability you want to use as much as possible. If it does this one, this decreases the cooldown of this. So I really, really, really like that ability. Now, I will take it off manual or put it on manual just for a second. Um, let me do it until we get to Wixwell's turn. Padraig does the increased speed. And then Wixwell does Codex, and I'm going to put it on Makage. I'm hoping if we get lucky, I'll show you the presets. I, did, I should have shown you that more. I kind of clicked on the champions and didn't show them to you. I'll show them to you at the end. You can also see Hell Hades video. If you're curious on how to build this, that's what I would recommend. One thing I will point out is if you want to test if it's working, you see, let's look at Makage, for example. She's got this shield with like the four little squares and this shield with the two different sides. Everyone should have the same thing. Two shields, two shields, two shields, two shields, two shields, two shields. If they don't have that, that means they're going to die soon, basically. Now, this run is a little bit unfortunate. Not this run, this affinity, because it is spirit affinity, so we're dealing with decreased speed. You can bring a Brogni in here instead of your um, Padre, but then it's tougher to go 2-1, almost impossible to go 2-1. Um... Or you could bring him in here instead of your damage dealer and use him as your damage dealer, which definitely works. And he does a lot of damage because he's reflecting off damage to the shield. Um, but he's not going to do the damage that Gentoro is going to do. And you'll see his damage is going to start ramping up and ramping up. Um, you're actually going to see it here in a bit because he uses Oni's Rage so much. So you can see everyone's debuff uh, or buff bar is filling up really, really fast. Um, there we go. Oni's Rage, about 600,000 per hit five times. 3 million damage. Pretty spectacular. A1 also does 400,000 plus damage. And whenever Lady Mikage A1s, Jintoro just joins in for fun. I mean, guys, the damage is spectacular. We're four turns in. Less than two minutes in, we already got 17 million damage. We're going to get to 70 million on one key in like five minutes or so. I mean, it's just not going to be long. You can see that the intercept buff is only on Mikage and it's down to a one turn cooldown, meaning she's going to take this next stun and it's going to be gone. I will try and jump in and place it, but when I was testing it earlier, I tested it three times, it inevitably falls off. What's going to happen is between when it falls off right now, she no longer has intercept, and when he gets his turn to do that, Padraig is going to place a heal on you. It almost it doesn't always happen, but it's going to happen pretty consistently. There's the shield growth. The biggest concern is Gentoro. If he takes a crit or something really early, or whoever your damage healer is, it's built a little less well with defense. Um, if one of those shields falls off, the run is over. You really like when you get to like turn count 30, you're pretty safe for a while until the clan boss really restarts really to smack. But early on, when the shield's a little smaller, because and if you're not familiar with the way Wixwell, well, I'm not as smart as Saf. Saf has explained all the numbers, but it's an exponential growth. So it's a percentage of a percentage. And so 
if it's a 30,000 you know, 30,000 HP shield or whatever, and you're increasing it by 15%, that's not a lot. But when it gets to 100,000, 500,000, a million, the 15% growth becomes huge, basically. And so the longer we do it, the more times it happens, the bigger that growth is. Like say at the beginning, you're adding 3,000. The next time you're adding 5,000. The next time you're adding 10,000. Like you're just adding more and more value to that shield over and over again. So again, we now have a one turn intercept and we can try and do it, but what ends up happening is it's not ready right after the stun and he places it on himself or on someone else or tries to place it, but everyone else already has 10 buffs. And we really just want to use it right after the stun, right after it falls off. And I could manually do that and I think it would work a little bit better, but because we have the Padre chances to reduce uh, skills, and we have the the refreshes and the reflexes and the merciless and stuff like that. I really think we're going to be fine in terms of keeping our buffs up. You can see right now everything everything that matters is at least at a five turn cooldown or five turn uh, duration. And I'm trying to think what else to say. The increased or decreased speed is definitely problematic, but I think the twenty percent turn meter built in for Padre kind of counters that. Like that's not something that Hell Hades had in his team. So I still think we're going to one. Um, if we have decreased speed and Mikage does her buff extension, it decreases the cooldown of that. If we have Padraig's, uh, increased speed ability, which is really just cleansing. That's all it's doing. He can cleanse that. Demitha does the same thing where she does her buff duration. It'll decrease the duration of any debuffs that are on you. So if it's affecting us, it's not affecting us too, too much. Um, let's take a look at, let's see if we can get another Gentoro smack in here in a second. 369 on the A1. We do keep decreased defense and weaken up pretty consistently. There's an ally attack, 435 on the A1 there. I have Padraig and Brimstone, because why not? There's another ally attack. 620 on the blood freeze from Gentoro. There's another shield growth. That was the cleanse, which is unfortunate because we needed it now, not then. Boom! 600 to 630. Five times, guys. I mean, I don't know what to say. I, I'll never get tired of watching that. Obviously, I love Jintoro as a champion. I really love him because he's my second plus four, and the first one was Norhog. So uh, I'm really happy to have a good champion in you know a plus four as opposed to Norhog, who sucks. The Heaven Cast is really big on him. That's what I was talking about earlier because it is 10 buffs, which you wouldn't get to typically if you were just running Lydia instead of Padraig, which is probably the recommendation. Or in this case, it can be any increased speed champion. I was trying to look at someone who has increased speed and maybe like buff durations, but I couldn't really find anybody. So increased speed and block debuffs is great. I only have Siffy. Uh, I know Elva can do it, but I don't have Elva, so I don't know who else can because the block debuffs would be really, really helpful. But you definitely need the increased speed if you're trying to go 2 1. Granted, I will probably make a video and let me know in the comments if you want this. I can make a video that shows a more budget option of this, but I see like a lot of other content creators are doing that. And Wixwell is awesome and can enable lots of easy one keys for people who maybe couldn't do it. So I was a little bit off. And when I said that we we're going to get our one key, it looks like it's going to take us about seven minutes, but the damage is going to continue ramping up. The, we have two ally attackers in here. We have Gentoro, who's absolute unit. And we have everyone built to do damage. Every single person here has crit rate, at least 70% crit rate. Everyone has either increased defense or increased attack to boost their damage. We have six star cruelty against the boss. And we have, I guess that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's our one key, six and a half minutes in. I'm very curious to see where this goes. I haven't watched it end. Um, my guess is probably like 300 million, but I just don't know. A lot of it depends on when Gentoro falls down. A lot of it depends on if we get some, you know, bad luck with Mikage being stunned or if we get some, uh, you know, bad luck with Gentoro's shields falling out early, maybe getting some crits, maybe uh, Wixwell not letting us decrease attack. He's built with accuracy because that decreased attack just stops how much damage you're doing into those shields. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some music on, speed this up. You can just watch that little number go up on the side of the screen. I'm super excited to see what the damage will be. I'll catch you guys at the end.
I stepped away for a little bit, but I apologize. I am back. <laughs> this is an insane number. I'm just looking at it for the first time. Gentoro, 314 million damage. 314 million. Uh, Demitha, 83, which is respectable. Obviously, six-star cruelty helps. Um, she hits really hard. Uh, well, relatively hard on the A1. We're not using her A3. That helps. Looks well with 60 million. I think a lot of that is actually the reflecting of the damage. Because at a certain point, you're taking so much damage. I think it counts against the shield. So I think he's reflecting like 6% of the damage he's taking. So I think that's part of it. Um, Podrick, 49, is very respectable. Makage, only 30, which is kind of surprising. Because she does hit on all of her abilities. Like even her buff extensions and attack. Her ally attack, she attacks. She has War Master, so I'm a little surprised that it's less damage because she still has some crit rate and crit damage. Um, 538 million damage. I know this is in game. I know the gear is hard. The speeds are hard. Gentoro's plus four. I get that. But that being said, like I can put in a Phoenix and do 200 million easily. I That's probably the next one I'll test. Jintoro works so great because he's got the synergy with Makagi, where Makagi is bringing him in, and he's our decrease defense and weekend champion. But, like, Dracomorph can do this. Uh, Fane can do a lot of this. Like, there are lots of champions that can do this. Jintoro plus four is just obviously one of the best ones. I will say Heaven Cast, even, like, a three-star blessing is going to be huge because if we go look at that... Uh, let me capture a screenshot of this real quick because this is awesome. Um... Let me make sure it's capturing the right screen. Because it might capture it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, let's take a look at Gentoro. His Heaven Cast buff is 5% damage for every buff. So that's 10 buffs, 5% or yeah, five percent extra damage. Just a 3-star makes a big difference because that will then put him at 1% damage for every buff. So that's instead of a 5% damage increase, it's a 10% damage increase. Um, the gear's all rolled, like, there's no real improvements there. Maybe some better ascensions and stuff like that, but not super fussed about it. Um, let me double check everyone does that. Yeah. Like, Mikagi has War Master, 73 crit rate, 220, 222% crit damage, 3200 attack. So, like, it's not crazy, but, again, like... She's attacking so much. The We have some ignore defense against the clan boss, 2%. Not much, I guess. Um, I expected more from that, to be completely honest with you. Like, that's an attack, that's an attack, that's an attack. Interesting. Um, anyways, this has already been a really long video. Uh, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this. I've got some really fun content coming out. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one.